All right. Okay, so um, right now we're going to actually continue with the sorting algorithms. Um, we're going to cover, um, uh, so I mean, we have covered already the um, uh, bubble sort and the uh, insertion sort. Uh, and yeah, and actually also like we, we just touched upon like heap sort, just touched upon it. Uh, since we talked about heapifies and, and, and these things, so we're gonna um, so we're gonna actually right now carry on with uh, other sorting algorithms. Again, just a reminder: bubble sort algorithm is not used in real world; it's just used like a, an educational tool. Um, and we are just simply like you know giving it this an easy or ease in introduction to um, to sorting algorithms. Um, we covered insertion sort. Right now, we're going to cover uh, selection sort. Okay, so um, write this down here. Selection sort. And it seems to me like I have a very um, very harsh kind of like a zigzag kind of like pixelated line but we'll see um so selection sort uh shares some similarities with um shares some similarities with insertion sort um so it shares some similarities Write this better. Similarities with uh, insertion sort. Except we grab actually like an element and we find where it should be. So um, we actually like grab every element and just trying to push it in its position. Uh, it has. a time complexity uh, of uh, o to the power uh, o of n to the power of 2 also o n squared okay you can say it's big o of n squared um so if we have given such an array for example like so so to describe this uh, let's say you have, for example, an array like seven, two, seven, four, one. If you make a space here, five, on five, and let's say three. Okay. Let's say you have an array that looks like this, with an indices of zero, one, two three, four, and five, all right? So let's say that you have such an array. Uh, how selection sort works. Um, for example, you start to grab, uh, you start actually to check the array, the whole array. So you are looping over every element and you are actually trying to find the minimum. So what is the smallest number? This is talking about ascending order, okay? And it goes the same thing for descending. Descending means it's going to be like find the largest element in the array and then you carry on. So this is ascending. And when we talk about ascending order, try to find the minimum or the smallest number okay and descending order in selection sort so descending ah order you're gonna try hmm. 
to find the biggest number. So what do you do with the biggest number or the smallest number when you find it? That's the million dollar question, right? So if you actually find it, so what you do, you actually swap it with the first element. So let's say, so two is, uh, so right now you actually pick up the first element and you compare it to infinity, let's say, or integer dot max or whatever. And then you say, okay, is two is less than the integer dot max. And then it's, of course it is. So for now, this is the minimum number. And then you move on. Is seven is less than two? No. Is uh, four less than two? No. Is one less than two? Yes. So one right now is the smallest number in the array. And then we carry on. Is five less than one? Is three less than one, right? And then you ask this question. So once you found the minimum number, so which happens to be one right now, we do swap it with the first element in the array. So right now you end up with two, uh, sorry, not two, right now, one, seven, four, two, five, and three. And right now this is sorted. So right now this you shouldn't touch anymore. And then rinse and repeat. Right now what you do is um, you again start right now the, the, the check area will be smaller, right? So you will not look at this anymore. This has been sorted already. You already found its sorted position. What you do is right now search for uh, the next element this next smallest element. So seven is actually small compared to infinity or integer dot max. Then four is smaller than seven. So this is gonna be the smallest element in the array. Then you do another check with two and then you figure out that two is smaller than four. So right now two became the smallest element you found so far. Then five is not smaller than two and three is not smaller than two. So what you do, you grab two and you swap it with the next element, right? So right now you're going to end up with one, two, uh, for the one, two, four, seven, five, three, right? And then you, and this is guy is sorted, this guy is sorted, and then you carry on, right? So at the end of the day, when you are actually like comparing these guys, so you find the minimum again, and then you figure out it's three, and then you swap it with this, with the first element, so it's going to be one, two, three, seven, five, four, right? So this is sorted, this is sorted, right? And then uh, we go up next with four is going to be the minimum, right? And you're going to swap it with seven, so one, two, three, four, five and seven, right? This one is sorted, this one is sorted, this one is sorted already, and this one is sorted already, right? Okay. And then you actually pick up the next element when you find it, if it is the smallest or not, right? This one. And uh, you figure out it's actually the smallest of the, of the two, so no need to swap, right? So this one found its, found its place in the array again. So the next like step is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then the last element has been left, which is going to be like the sorted elements already has been found, found its sorting place. So that's this is pretty much it. This is how uh, selection sort uh, basically works. So you are all the time like looping over every element in the array every time, like with shrinking, you are shrinking the size just a little bit uh, once you found the, the sorted position of the element. And this is pretty much it. This is like what uh, selection sort is all about. Do you guys have any questions about this one? No, it's clear. Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, so uh, let's dive deep into uh, another kind of algorithm. So right now we have seen bubble sort, insertion sort, and uh, selection sort, and all of them, they are actually quite heavy, let's say, or relatively heavy. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, divide and conquer algorithms. Um, it is similar to strategies, uh, war strategies. So divide and 
uh, I think it was written like this, divide and conquer. Okay, divide and conquer algorithms. Okay, so um, divide and conquer algorithms, uh, meaning that like <clears throat> what you do is you literally like as it says, you divide your problem into smaller problems and then you tackle them. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So you take whatever problem you have and you break it to its smallest piece, like the smallest possible size to the point that you cannot actually break the problem any further. OK, this is this is the, 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 the core soul of, or the core concept of divide and conquer algorithms. Just take your like your your problem, just trying to divide it until you cannot divide it anymore. OK. Um, think of it like uh, also divide and conquer, like if you look at it in, in war strategies, like they usually like if you would like to conquer an army, what you do is just you split that or you try to split that army into smaller battles like and try to distract and make it smaller army instead of like having 100,000 soldiers into one place, trying to make them smaller, like try to attract smaller and smaller pieces and then you conquer them like small piece by piece so we can actually like win the war over. This is how uh, there's also like an ancient war strategy, right? Uh, which is applying exactly the same here. Two types of algorithms we're going to look at uh, today. Uh, when it comes to divide and conquer, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about or look at merge sort, and we're going to talk about the quick sort. Okay. So, <clears throat> first of all, let's talk about merge sort. Now, merge sort is is super easy, but just we're going to need to divide it into two pieces, right? Uh, the first part, we're going to talk about the merging itself. Uh, let's assume that you have already sorted arrays and you would like to merge them, okay? Once you understand the merging strategy, you can actually go ahead and just simply understand right now what merge sort is going to be. It's going to be super easy then, okay? So, uh, let's say part one. Uh, when we talk about, let's talk about like, let me write this down here. So merge sort part one. Merging. How merging works, OK? So um, assume that you are having two arrays that are sorted, two sorted arrays, okay? You have an array A and you have array B and you would like to sort them, or sorry, merge them in a result array C, okay? So we have two, eight, 15, 18. And then under B, so let me just draw a line here. Under B here, we have five, nine, twelve, seventeen. Okay. And what we are trying to do here is just try to merge those two into one big C array. So I'll grab a color here. So this is I. We're going to have two pointers. One is I, one is J. Okay. And if we are actually trying to sort them in the ascending order, okay, and we have an index K, okay, which in which indexes into C array, okay, the result array. So um, if you actually like compare two and five, you will see that when you try to merge right now, so we are trying to merge the, the, the two arrays, on the condition again on the condition that these two guys are actually been sorted so you have as you can see here 2 8 15 18 this is like sorted array ascending b is also sorted array ascending um so what we do here is we ask ourselves like is two less than five it is so what we do is we write in two we increment the i pointer 
right? Or the index i. And we increment k, right? So this is k plus plus, right? And then you compare. Uh, so i is right now here. Uh, so this is i plus plus, right? And then we carry on. Is five less than eight? It is. So we actually write in five. So we're going to put in five. You increment the j. And we carry on. And of course, we can we increment k. So right now, k is here. OK. The question comes here is, is eight less than nine? It is. So we write in eight. And then we increment i. So right now, i will point here. So this is i plus plus. And we increment k. So k will point to the next element where it should be inserted, right? And then we compare 9 is less than 15. So we put in 9. We increment j. Right? And we increment k. To be pointing to the next empty position where we're going to insert. And then we ask, is actually 15 less than 12? It is not so. 12 is less than 15. So we're going to actually put 12. And we increment j. Right? And we increment k. And then we'll see. Um, right now, 12. So right now, 17 compared to 15, right? 15 is actually uh, less than 17. So we're going to write in 15. We increment i. Uh, i plus plus and k plus plus. OK. And right now we have 17 is less than 18, so we write in 17. J actually will increment to emptiness, so there is nothing in there, so J cannot increment anymore. And once this is done, we immediately no need to compare anything. We just simply insert 18 right there. Right? If in case was, let's say we had here 19, 20, 22, and so on and so forth, right? If this happens, that you have like jagged arrays, so we have an array longer than the other ones. Once you actually reach to a condition that is similar to this, you just simply blindingly, because already this, these two arrays has been sorted, you just blindingly grab this whole array and just simply insert it right there, right? So you grab right now 19, 20, 22. You just loop over every element and just simply keep inserting into the result C because there's nothing to compare to. And you are already done with it. And this, this part has been sorted. This is why it is a condition that it needs to be sorted, right? So you have when you're trying to merge two arrays, in the merge sort at least, both of the arrays has to be sorted. Does this make any sense? Yes, it does. Yes. OK, all right. Any questions so far? No. All right, so let's uh, talk about merging strategies. So uh, right now we have we have several types of, of, of merging strategies. So you have like two way merging, which we have done right now. We have four way merging. Um, Let's let's actually have a look at this one too. So really quick, um, probably I will not work it out until the end because it's, a little, it's going to be a little bit long. But let's say that you have A, array A, array B, array C, and D, and you would like to put the result in R array. Okay. So. Um, so let's say you have 4, 6, 12, then you have here 3, 5, 9, then you have here 8, 10, 16, and then you have here 2, 4, 
and 18. Okay. So assuming that you have an array like this, or, or sorry, not array, you have four arrays like this, and you would like to merge them all in together. Uh, what you would do is, for example, like you're going to have, of course, you're going to have indices for each one. So you have here, for instance, so you have I, J, K, L, and you have here, for example, index M, right? Now, so so for you're going to have like tracking like four in like five indices you're going to have to keep track of, okay? So uh, what you do is, let's say you compare this row together and you find the smallest number. So the smallest number of all those four is going to be two. So two, right? And uh, and then you carry on. Once you actually like have this, you're gonna actually like compare the next element. Yet all of those are actually gonna be still the same. So for example, your next comparison pattern will look similar to to this, right? And then you compare all those four numbers, and then you find the minimum. So the minimum is gonna be let's say three. So you're gonna actually write in three. Right, and then your pattern will actually change again. So you're gonna have right now you're gonna have something similar to this, uh, hopefully like so. Right, and then when you do the comparison again, you will figure out that you have two fours. Right, uh, in this case, you just simply keep up with keep the keep the number which comes first. For example. So if you would like to keep the elements of the array like sorted, uh, well, I mean, they are not going to be sorted by the occurrence, but but uh, there are actually two types of sortings, by the way. Um, uh, an array that actually is uh, like an algorithm, sorry, that actually sorts an array based on the, based on occurrence of elements. So if you have an element that is similar, to, is, is exactly the same as the other one, but in an unsorted array, it came first. Uh, then it will actually keep that uh, like uh, when it occurred in the sorting. So for example, uh, uh, right now it is not that very important in here and merge sort probably doesn't even keep track as far as I remember. But let's say if you have, for example, something like two, four, and then three, and then four, and then five, right? Did I sort it? Nope, I didn't. Okay, perfect. Actually, then let it be one. OK, so um, let's let me actually mark this with yellow so you can see what I'm talking about here. And this is going to be uh, red. OK, so when this array gets sorted, there are two types of sortings. There is there is sorting which keeps track of when a certain element has occurred. So for example, like uh, if you are trying to uh, sort this array, uh, this four came first, right? So if you actually sort this as a as one, two, three, then you will write in four, then uh, four, then this is it. Actually, one, two, three, four. Yeah, exactly. So there are sorting arrays, that, there are sorting algorithms that actually work on that concept, right? So they keep when a repeated element has actually appeared. Some others don't. Some others will actually sort it like one, two, three, and then, and then four, and then Four. Okay, so we can actually see those uh, probably during us uh, throughout the semester. Anyway, um, right now your uh, probably sorting will look a little bit different. I am running out of colors here, so let me pick up something uh, a little bit crazy. Like, um, come on, I cannot choose. Oh, oh boy, I killed the application. Uh, come on. Oh my God, I cannot change even the pen. All right, now I can. No, I can't. Okay, I killed the pen. <laughs> I killed the application. All right, fine. So let's let's actually do it like this. Uh, so it's going to be something similar to this, I guess. What an amazing color. So this is going to be like the 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 the. The, the the next pattern and actually like it it goes on so this is called the four-way merging okay and i really would love to change right now the color it's super important to me so can i oh i cannot click anywhere okay i have an idea hang on 
I just disconnected my pen. Just to see if I can force it. Nope, I can't. And whoa. And where's my one note again? So, okay. And can I choose right now? Uh, nope. Yep, okay, hang on. Let me. Um, Close all windows. Uh -huh. Okay, let me just do this. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Um, hang on, guys. Let me just um, let me just stop sharing for a moment here. Probably just had a crazy hiccup. Uh, sorry about that. Technical problems. Let's see. Okay, now okay, now I can write. Okay, perfect. Let me uh, reshare my screen. But I have to say, like I noticed right now, I don't have any glitches today, which is super amazing. So probably Windows upgrading to Windows 11 actually paid off. Let's see. So right now we can write. Listen, learned. Do not change color live, right? So there we go. OK, it works. All right, so um, back to the subject. We said that um, this type of merging is called a four, oh, four way merging. Uh, if I know how to write today, merging. There we go. OK. And this was a two-way merging. OK. Now, um, here are several ways of doing also two ways merging. So if you are actually having uh, A, B, C, D. I'm going to actually show three of them, so we'll show some probabilities here. So A, B, why it is not. Okay, there we go. B. Um, B, C, D. And then I'm going to show also case another one. A, B, C, D. So imagine that you are having a uh, four arrays that you would like to merge, right? You can have you can actually do it in, in, in a different ways. Like you can do it like so. So you merge A and B, then you merge C and D, then you merge uh, the resulted arrays, right? So if this is going to be R1, R2, then you merge it all in R3, right? OK, so this is one way of doing this. Another way of doing this is that you can actually merge A and B into A, let's say, so we, or not into A necessarily, but into a result one, let's say, and then you merge C with that result, which is going to give you R2, and then you merge D, which is going to give you R3, right? So you have that way of doing this. Another way of doing this is the opposite way. So for example, you can say, okay, I'm going to merge Probably I jinxed it when I said no glitching. Right now it's actually glitching. Uh, so R1, you can merge that into R2, right? And then you can merge that into R3. Okay. So this is one way of, of merging actually. Okay. So you have like this way of merging, this strategy, this strategy, and this strategy. All of them are valid to in order to to do two-way merging uh, uh, all the time. Now let's talk about merge sort. Okay, so right now we understand how merging happens. We understand how merging between two arrays happen. We understand how merging between four arrays happen at once. We know that we can actually take four arrays and merge them in that strategy in that way. So you don't need to 
uh, uh, do the f all four at once, but you can actually do like two by two by two by two, right? So you can do that. Uh, uh, so let's talk about uh, two-way merge sort. Two-way merge sort. Let me just draw a line right there. Okay. So a two-way merge sort. So if you are actually having an array that is like uh, like as follows: nine. Um, I'm just going to separate them with spaces here. So nine, three, seven, five, six, four, eight, two. 9, 3, 7, 5, 6, 4, 8, 2. Okay, so uh, what you do here is that the first step in a merge sort is that you do the divide part. We said that we have divide and conquer, right? So the conquering is basically the merging bit. Uh, the division here is that you need to divide your array into the smallest element possible. So uh, so, in looking at this array, you are trying to divide your problem. Right now, your problem is sorting these elements. So, uh, you you need to divide this array into the smallest chunks possible that you can conquer it, right? So, at the end of the day, when you are actually trying to, to uh, approach this, when you divide this array uh, to, to, to sort it, you're going to actually divide it into uh, how many elements do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to have eight lists, and each list or each array is going to have one element. So you're going to have here, this is one element, uh, this is one element list. So imagine that you have like eight arrays, right? So imagine that you have like eight arrays, and each array, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight so you have here nine and there is nothing in there and then three nothing in there uh seven nothing in there five nothing in there six nothing in there four eight and two okay so imagine that you have like an array like when you divide your problem you divide it in that way you're gonna have eight lists uh, in memory uh, uh, um, with, uh, with every list having only a single element, right? Now, you cannot actually divide your problem anymore. This is it. This is the maximum which you can get in terms of division or in terms of simplifying your problem. Right now, it's actually easy from there, actually. So if you look at these eight lists, if you look at your problem as eight lists, what you're going to do here is that you're going to need to merge those two lists, right? If you have an odd number of elements, then just can le you can leave it later to be merged later, okay? Uh, but right now we have an even number of, uh, of elements, so we can actually merge it also in that way. And then once you get a result, you can actually start merging those results and then merge the result and then you merge the final result, right? So let's actually give this a try. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do exactly what we have done right here, okay? This 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 part, I mean, okay? So um, you're gonna um, compare the two elements. So you say, okay, is three uh, is three less than nine? It is. So you can actually insert it into a result array. So this and this guy actually going to have an array which has two elements, three and nine. And then you're going to actually merge those two, which you're going to have an element seven and five. And then you're going to merge those two. Oh, sorry, not seven and five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this is seven, this is five. I'm getting ahead of myself here. And then you're going to have here four and six. And then you're going to have here two and eight. 
Okay. And right now you have, we are just simply applying the same strategy which we have applied before. And just right now you are having one element, one list, or oh, sorry, uh, a list of size one. Right now I have a list of size two. So right now we're gonna, you know, rinse and repeat. So we're gonna actually grab these two guys and merge them. So right now we're gonna have three, five, seven, and nine. So we have this, this, this. And you merge those two, right? So you end up with two, four, six, and eight. Again, using the same strategy we have mentioned before. And then you merge those two arrays again. So you're gonna end up with uh, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is your sorted array. Okay. So this is when it comes to merge sort, this is how to, um, um sort your arrays uh in that Sorry. divide and conquer yes uh you forgot the nine. Oh, did i oh yeah right thank you thank you there we go thanks okay nothing difficult actually so just divide it divide your problem to the minimal problem and then you move on OK, the um, complexity of division. Can somebody actually tell me what is the complexity of at least like uh, the, 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 the at least like how many passes? How many passes did we have here so far, by the way? You have like here we have the first pass, the second pass and the third pass, right? So we have, mm -hmm. hmm? yes. Maybe it will be O of log n. So it's going to be indeed actually a log of n passes, right? So you have like three passes for eight elements, right? So it's actually a logarithmic. This is the log part, but the comparison, how much it will take. So this is actually log n for sure. So what is going to be the comparison like the comparison? How many times did we compare the elements in order to sort them? N times. N times indeed. So at the end, we're going to have O of N log N. This is actually the complexity of merge sort. Okay. It is actually considered to be a relatively fast algorithm. Any questions regarding this part? No. All right. All right, so um, let's talk about the final one, which I wanted to cover with you today. Uh, and we and we can call it today and we wrap up. Uh, is uh, quick sort. So quick sort. Uh, has been invented in the 1960s, so 1958 till 1960 or something like that, uh, by a guy named Tony Hoare. I think it's this is how his name is uh, written. Um, hang on, let me let me double check just real quick how how his name is written correctly. Uh, 
I'll just double check very, very quickly. Yep, I have written it correctly. Okay, so uh, Tony was actually um, trying to actually this. It's actually quite fun, uh, funny thing that you you could actually see the um, the original paper. Uh, hang on, let me see if I can actually dig this one out. I actually showed it to the students last time. It's actually quite fun. Uh, sort uh, original paper. And uh, you could see that when he was developing this, there is a, a certain point where he couldn't push, like he doesn't have enough memory to, 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 to test things, so he had to extrapolate like the, 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 the results, or like figure it out based on the formulas or the math formulas. So let me just paste it right there for you. Um, but it's actually uh, it's actually quite fast. So let me see if I can actually open it from from here. So this is the uh, with the link which I've sent you is the original paper like published at that day. Uh, is it written there when? So yeah, the paper was published in 1961. <clears throat> so um, Computer Journal, Volume 2, April 1962. Somebody's actually copied this and written on it over it. Because uh, if you look here, here's the, uh, here's the actual uh, year right here. OK, so uh, if you look at here, here's the uh, analysis, obviously, like the complexity analysis and everything. Um, it is also in log n um, algorithm, but this is, I think, in the average case, the best case is O of n, and the uh, or log n, I think, I cannot remember anymore. And uh, the worst case is O of n squared, actually. Um, ah, there we go. Here's the table. So you see, these figures were computed by formula since they cannot be achieved on a, on the 405 owing to limited resource store size. So back then the memory was actually quite expensive and he couldn't like push any more uh, to his computational power to test this properly. So he had to like, you know, based on the math, he can, he should have like, he, he, he needed to uh, uh, like calculate this. So this is basically on, on the machines, like from the 1960s, uh, sorting 500 elements in one minute is actually a very, very fast, algorithm by I mean compared to that time by then right um, 2000 elements in 11 minutes if if this was like if he had enough memory and he got um, uh, sorry in six minutes uh, if he got this then um, then man this is like a this is like an achievement on its own right so um, and it's considered to be the fastest algorithm so far in practice right uh like people are relying on it most of the time there is even faster algorithms obviously but uh, we're, and we're gonna talk about them later um but yeah this is uh, for example if you are so if you are um if you are sorting an array in uh, in c sharp so if you say uh, list dot sort uh what it will do it will uh it will actually like as i already have mentioned before so it's going to use insertion sort up to what 16 elements and then afterwards it will use quick sort um, so here's uh, how quick sort will work let me write this to be complete so the 1960s published in 1961 right Okay, so imagine that you have imagine that you have a list of numbers that looks like this. So it's actually okay, hang on, let me write this down. So this is a divide and conquer algorithm as well. Okay. Um, um, now uh, it relies on it relies on choosing uh, a pivot, something which is called a pivot. Okay. 
and I will tell you what a pivot is in a second. Um, and actually choosing the pivot is a very highly debated topic, uh, or at least it was, I think, until a certain point. Uh, there are many PhDs and papers has been published on how just to choose a pivot uh, for for quicksort and to get to extract the the maximum speed out of uh, quicksort in in most in most of the time, right? Um, and you actually uh, so it relies on choosing the pivot, all depending again on the sorting order. If we are talking about ascending order, all numbers before the pivot should be less than the pivot. And all numbers after the pivot should be larger. Than the pivot, OK? This is the main important rule. Once you actually divide the array into before and after, so for example, if you have an array, Hello, can you hear me back? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, I don't know, just suddenly the Wi-Fi just gone uh, all of a sudden. Uh, what was the last thing you guys have actually uh, heard or seen? You mm -hmm. just finished the sentence about that, how well, before the pivot, every number should be less than it, and after it, every number should be larger than it. OK, perfect. Um, all right, so we didn't. Uh, um, oh, Harris, so what? <laughs> he is like mixing the language, mixing the letters. OK, uh, anyway, um, so thanks. Uh, thanks for the heads up now. And sorry for losing the Internet. Uh, we are still recording, aren't we? 
Yep, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. So what I wanted to say here is if you have a pivot somewhere in the middle of the array, so if your element happens to be here, everything here has to be larger, right? Uh, sorry, larger. And everything here has to be less than the pivot. Okay, uh, like this. Okay. So the pivot is less than whatever here, and the pivot is larger than whatever is in here. That's 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 the idea. A pivot in English is like a, you can think of it like an axle or or a uh, yeah you can think of it as an axle. Uh, and axle is like if you in, in graphics let's say if you have a square and you would like and you have a pivot point right at the center. If you would like to rotate that square like so, you will end up with a square that looks like so. So this is the axle. It's like the wheel, like the uh, like when you have a car. So when you have the car and you have a, an axle, right? So if this is the front, uh, if this is the wheel and this is the front, uh, the front of the car, right? And this is, here's the um, here's the other wheel, right? Uh, they are both of them are actually connected with an axle. I'm talking about the back wheels, not the front wheels. The front wheels have differentials. It's uh, something else, right? Um, so a pivot, you can think of it like all the wheels are rotating around the axle or the pivot point, right? If I actually change the pivot point of a square from here, let's say to, let's say here, or let it be here, okay? And I would like to rotate it like so, you will end up, well, let's say not rotate, let's say 90 degrees, you will end up with, if the pivot point was here again, you will end up with the square being here. Okay, so this is what a pivot means, right? Um, so, uh, with after all these kind of analogies and everything, right now we can actually talk about how uh, quicksort works. So, a given an array that looks like this, so 10, 16, 8, 12, 15, 16, 6, 3, ah, 3, 9, 5, and that's it, okay? And right now what you need to do is try to pick up a pivot. Now there are, as I already have mentioned before, picking up a pivot is, is like a heavily, what it was heavily debated, uh, uh, concept or, or, or heavily debated uh, topic, and uh, I'm not going to actually delve into that. But they say that uh, uh, that the uh, choosing a pivot randomly uh, helps out tremendously in 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 have in avoiding the worst case uh, complexity of a of a uh, of a quick sort. Um, also. Um, so choosing randomly in there, uh, it's so because some people say, okay, just take the array length and divide it by two, and then you just pick up the middle one, right? So basically pick up the, the middle uh, element and use it as a pivot and start organizing. But statistically, like when, when using a quick sort in, in, in real world scenarios, sometimes it doesn't yield a good result. So people say random pick would actually even help. Uh, to uh, mitigate that just a little bit, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a quite um, discussable thing. Like it can be discussed uh, to pick which which pivot to pick. Right now, we're gonna make our lives a little bit easier, and um, and we are just gonna simply pick up the first element uh, for a pivot because we would like to describe how quicksort works. Um, regardless of how you pick the pivot, once you pick up the pivot, you just simply start, you know, doing the 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 the, the partitioning, uh, the partitioning phase, and then the sorting phase, and so on and so forth, right? Or yeah, basically partitioning phase is the is the most important part. So imagine that you have an I, and you have a J, and J will actually be compared to integer dot max, 
right? So you can think of it like J is actually standing right here. Okay. Okay, pointing to an infinity. If you would like to talk about it as a as a as a uh, as a concept, but there is no infinity in computers. Obviously, we have just integer dot max or float dot max or whatever it is. Um, and what we do, we actually increment i and j until. So if you are actually so, let's talk from the perspective of i. You keep incrementing i until you find an element larger than the pivot and you decrement j so you push j in this direction until you find an element that is less than the pivot if you found both satisfying the condition both of them then you just simply swap those two elements okay so let's 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 um, let's let's um, dive deep into this so if j is actually pointing to integer dot max uh, if I compare this to the 10, I'm actually trying with J to find the uh, an element less than 10. So 10 is still larger than than whatever infinity it was or integer dot max. So we actually increment J. So we increment J. Uh, so J is actually pointing right there. <laughs> Excuse me. Is five less than 10? It is, then we stop incrementing J. Let's increment I. And then I will actually point here. Okay. Is I larger than 10, right? Is the ith element? So if, if 16 is larger than 10, yes, then we do the swapping. So right now you end up with uh, 10, 5, 8, 12, 15, 6, 3, 9, and then 16. Okay. Your I is still here. Your J is well, still there, right? This is after the swap. Then we carry on. I is actually trying to find the element that is larger than the pivot, right? So you're trying to find the larger than the pivot. Is eight larger?
Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. All right. OK, uh, sorry about that. Today is a special day, apparently. Apparently, like it's it's Friday and, 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 and Wi-Fi is like saying, OK, it's Friday, so please leave me alone or something. Now, um, all right, so where were we? We said that uh, we were trying to increment the I uh, to, to find any element larger than the pivot, right? So we found 12 is larger than 10, right? So we stop right there. Let's see J. So when J decrements, we find J that's actually also less than I, so less than, sorry, less than the pivot. So we do swap them, right? So right now we're going to have 10, 5, 8. Those two guys has been swapped, right? So there's going to be 9, 15, 6, come on, 6. Now it's glitching, right? So it's all fun and games. Uh, 12, 16, right? So this is J. J is standing right there. I is actually standing right here, OK? So we start going forward, right? So I increments trying to find the number, the next number that is larger than the pivot, which is this 10. So 10 here, uh, I'm just going to just simply mark it with this. So this is our pivot, OK? Just to be uh, clear here. So is 15 is larger than 10? It is, so we're going to keep it here. Is J, so J right here, is going to be incremented. So we actually stop right now with the I. 3 is less than 10, which is true. We're going to stop incrementing right here. So we're going to actually end up with 10, 5. We swap them, obviously, right? If we, if you haven't noticed yet. So 5. Um, oh, my goodness. OK. 5, 8, 9, 3, 6. Um, 15. So 3, 6, 15, 12, 16. OK, and we are still with this pivot right here. OK, then we do increment, right? So we increment I. Right. You can also like think of it like you can. So J is here, I is here, right? So if we increment i, i is actually still less than 6. So you actually keep incrementing it. So i uh, 15, we found another one. So we found the largest uh, number. So 10 is here, right? So we stop with the i incrementing. Then we increment j, right? And j found that the... Uh, that 6 is actually less than 10. However, when we incremented j, i has crossed, or j has crossed i, right? So right now they exchange places. Right now we actually stop. So if we increment i, we found, yes, the largest number, and we stopped. And then j incremented, and we found actually, uh, actually j incremented, and once it incremented, it actually has crossed i. So both of the i and j exchange places. So if, if j right now less than i, what we do, we actually say that we found the uh, we found the the the, the uh, we found the pivot position, and the pivot position is actually at j. So what we do, we actually swap j at element, so jth element, and the pivot. So right now, what we're going to have is six five. 8, 9, 3, 10, 15, 12, 16. And this is sorted. And this is your pivot. Right now, whatever is in here is larger than the pivot. Whatever is in here is less than the pivot. 
And right now you actually do repeat the same process again. For every like partition of the array, you go into the partitioning phase again. You pick up, for example, for example, if you're going to pick up the same strategy, you can pick up this one as a pivot, and then you start do, having an I, an I and J. Uh, sorry, this is J. So you have, for example, I and J here, and then you do uh, the process which we have done before, and then later on in the next iteration, you, this one is going to be your I here and your J here, and then you do uh, the same process as well until you get your array actually sorted. Okay, so this is, um, in short, uh, this is actually a uh, quick sort. You just simply like, the first the first step which you have seen here, you just need to repeat it all over again, but just for these chunks. All right. Um, just to be sure here, um, and also according to my, let me just check my books just real quick, just to be 100% sure about this. Uh, so quick sorts. The average running time, it's actually, right now it's the, the fastest known algorithm when it comes to comparison sorts, right? Uh, the, it's actually the fastest, uh, the, so, sorry, the average running time is n log n. So average on average. It's actually n log n. Uh, on average, it is O of n log n. Okay, worst case, O of n squared. Um, But it actually can be made be, but it can be actually happening unlikely when you are choosing your pivot correctly. So you make it like very unlikely to happen if you do your, uh, if you do you choose your uh, pivot correctly. But I think uh, I think the best case was O of n, as far as I remember. I just need to find uh, where is this mentioned. Probably it is. Uh, give me a second here. So worst case is O of n squared. Best case is uh, actually is O is n log n best case. I made a mistake right there. And the uh, average case. Sorry about that. So average case. So hang on. So this is the uh, on average case. So this is going to be the best case analysis according to the book which I'm looking at right now, the uh, data structures and algorithmic analysis in C. So the average case is, um, oh my God, hang on, I made a mistake here. Yeah, sorry, actually it's correct, n log n, the average case. And best case was also n log n. So average and best, Is, is both of them are n log n. Worst case is n squared. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. All right. Uh, let me also check out the, the, the next reference, which is the introduction to Algorithms, the big green book from MIT Press by Thomas Corman and the rest of the authors. Just to be like, to make this material as complete as possible. Thank you. Um, R. 
quick sort so 145 it's a gigantic book man later on actually we're gonna see a non um, uh, non-comparison sorts um, which happen to be like um, even faster in certain places. So again, the other book also confirms uh, O of n squared for the worst case analysis. Uh, expected running to run time. If you are actually randomizing, there you go, there's also additional detail here. If you are randomizing your, uh, choosing your, uh, uh, um, uh, choosing your pivot point, uh, or your pivot, sorry, not pivot point, your pivot uh, element, um, is actually going to have an average case of n log n uh, running time. So uh, yeah, that's that's actually pretty much it. All right. Any questions so far? No. All right. Okay. If there are no uh, questions, I think I'm going to stop recording right here.